Hi, my name is Christy Forsyth, and this is Seven Steps for Developing Your Intuition. This is something that so many people come to me for in my coaching sessions, in my membership, because this is something that each and every one of us want to be developing, or hopefully we want to be developing that, because really our intuition is the GPS for our soul. It is the GPS for us to live our absolute best life. So if we're wanting to maximize our time and our energy here in this lifetime, the best way to do that is to let our intuition lead the way. That's going to show us exactly the steps that we need to take or give us a sense of the steps that we need to take so that we can get there more quickly, more efficiently, and uh, avoid a lot of the pitfalls along the way. Our intuition helps to show us where the pitfalls are, where uh, we can avoid certain challenges or repeating certain lessons, that kind of stuff. So when we learn how to tune into it, it just helps life to get easier, essentially. Let's start with number one. Number one is all about tuning in with our body. If you think about the body, our body is our greatest intuitive tool, and it is always providing us with information about the people, places, and things around us. And I think so often we forget to pay attention to that, or we've been even taught to not pay attention to these things. But I want you to notice the way that your body is responding to the people, places, and things around you. Oftentimes, with our body, our body will have some kind of a telltale sign that it's responding intuitively to something. So for example, people will say, I like to go with my gut. That's simply following your intuition, right? So that is telling me that your body gives you some kind of a sensation, probably in the stomach area, in response to certain people, places, and things. Now for me, that looks like I process a lot of energy through my heart center. So for me, I will get a specific feeling when my intuition is wanting me to pay attention to something through my heart center, through my heart chakra, right here where my heart is. Other people will have that experience in different areas of, of their body. So paying attention to that, paying attention to whether people, places, and things that you're connecting with feel good, feel light, feel uplifting for you, paying attention to people, places, and things, and, and whether they feel like they're bringing you down in some way or there's more negative energy. So the more that you're tuning into that, that's going to give you a lot of information that you can then take and use to make decisions for your life. Number two is to pay attention to the subtleties. What I mean by this is that so many people are expecting that our intuition is going to knock us over with this big moment of clarity. And while every once in a while we have that, in my experience, most of the time, it's way more subtle than that. In fact, the voice of fear and ego is way louder than the voice of the intuition. So we have to, number one, allow ourselves to get quiet on a regular basis so that we're tuning in, so that we're listening to the intuition. But number two, we have to make sure that we're honoring that subtle, quiet little voice that creeps in. I oftentimes find that the energy of intuition feels more neutral, whereas fear and ego and what our ego wants us to do will feel very connected with the energy of fear. So oftentimes you can tune into what does the energy of this feel like? But paying attention to those subtle little things that are coming through, it doesn't have to be loud to be your intuition. In fact, it's probably not going to be. Number three is to look backwards. And to me, this is just absolutely a great hack for connecting with your intuition. Because if you think back, if you look back on your life and you recognize situations where you intuitively knew something, and maybe you didn't honor it. And then later on, that came up for you and you were able to see, you know what? I intuitively felt that and I was right. Looking back on situations like that, and maybe you may even make a list of times in your life where you knew something to be true and that was later on proven to be true. I want you to ask yourself, how did I know that? In what way did I know that? A lot of times intuitive information is going to come through the senses. So did you, did you have just a thought in your mind that gave you a sense? And maybe that thought in your mind had a different feeling to it than the thought of fear, a thought that would, would come in fear or ego. Or did you just have a knowing? Of, of the situation? Did you just have a sense that 
something was off or something was wrong or that it was the right direction for you to go in because intuition works both ways. So just kind of looking back and reflecting, how did I know what I knew and how can I take this information and apply it moving forward? So how can I recognize when I have that same feeling, that same response, that same way of thinking, that same feeling of a knowing? And can I use that moving forward to begin to recognize that that's my intuition so that I can start to honor it. Number four is to trust yourself. This is the biggest barrier that I find with people in terms of honoring their intuition is simply choosing to honor their intuition. We oftentimes will have these intuitive thoughts and feelings and knowing that will come in for us and then we ignore them or we we write them off or we say, no, that's not right. Or, uh, you know, like that, that, I'm just making that up in my head and we ignore that. And usually we regret that later a lot of times, right? But we can have this awareness and, and not trust it. So I think that a big step with intuition is learning how to trust it sooner because you're going to save yourself a whole lot of trouble as you're moving forward. Number five is to notice the things that are coming through when when you're doing mindless things. So, for example, when you're driving in your car or when you're going for your for a walk or when you're just doing something where for me a lot of times it comes through when I'm in the shower because water is a powerful conductor. So, you're in a meditative state and you're you're with this water that becomes a conductor for the energy that's very connected to intuition. And so, I have all kinds of messages that come through for me in the shower. So you might find that that's true for you too, or a lot of people will have it happening when they're driving in their car, or even when you're having a conversation and you just have this seemingly random thought come through or random feeling come through, you're going to want to pay attention to that because a lot of times I find that intuition will come through the back door. So what I mean by that is oftentimes we're so focused on connecting with our intuition or connecting with a specific answer or connecting with what it is that we need to know in order to move forward with something. And we become so focused on that that we're focusing on that from the logical part of the mind. We don't connect with intuition from the logical part of the mind. And as long as you stay in the logical part of the mind, it becomes very difficult to connect. In fact, it's impossible to connect with the intuitive part of the mind while you are in that logical part of the mind. So we really want to shift over to that logical part of the mind. And so what will happen is our intuition will try to support us and help us and and get us out of our own human way. And, And that will come through the back door or that will come when we're not expecting it. So I want you to pay attention to those things that come through when you are having a quiet moment or you're doing those things. Maybe you know what I'm talking about and you can think of specific examples. I'd love to hear them in comments below as to when your intuition comes through. Once you learn to pay attention to that, you will recognize recognize that, oh, every time I have a really good idea that comes through when I'm in the shower, I should listen to that and I should honor that. The next step, speaking of getting quiet, is meditation, some form of meditation. Now, not everybody's great at meditation. I I see it as something, as a skill that you build, that you work on, that you develop. And so I definitely recommend that everybody work on this. This is our way that we tune in to source energy. You think about you want to charge your cell phone and we also want to charge our soul and our intuition. And so the more that we're intentionally choosing to do something that is meditative, it's going to connect us and it's going to allow us to receive the intuitive messages in a way that's more powerful and in a way that helps us to feel more supported and more connected. Now, you don't have to meditate in the traditional way for this to work for you. In fact, I oftentimes recommend that you find what works for you. So for some people, that meditation is going to look like going for a walk on a regular basis or just taking quiet time to sit outside or to sit by a body of water or to uh, do something that's creative like drawing or coloring or 
working on something that requires you to build or put things together. A lot of people will go into a meditative state there. I want you to just pay attention basically to wherever you connect with a flow state, a state where you can get lost in that energy and repeat that as often as you possibly can. That is going to allow you to go into a meditative state to make those connections, and that's always going to support your intuition development. Number seven is to look for signs. So a lot of times intuition will come from within us, but we also have this whole world around us that is helping to support us, that is helping to guide us and to guide our path. And so sometimes it's helpful to pay attention to the world that's happening around us as well. I always say the world is our tarot card. It's, it's always showing us signs and symbols and synchronicities that are meant to help to guide our journey. So I want you to start to pay attention to what's happening outside of yourself. Now, this might come in the form of somebody saying something to you that just really triggers an important thought that leads to a series of other thoughts and a series of actions that you need to follow through with. It might come in the form of of an Instagram quote or post that just really resonates with you and gives you some sense of clarity and guidance on what it is that you're trying to understand. It might come in the form of an animal that crosses your path or a number that crosses your path. And while you can look up anything that shows up in your experience as a symbol, I always recommend that before you look that up, before you look up the meaning of, for example, a rabbit that crosses your path, start with your own frame of reference. What does a rabbit mean to you? What does a rabbit symbolize to you? The thing is that symbolism is the language of the universe. So this is how our guides, our angels, our higher power are communicating with us from our outside of ourselves. So we want to pay attention to those symbols that are showing up outside of ourselves. What numbers are showing up into your experience? The angels especially will connect with us in the form of repeating numbers to make sure that we're getting a message. And again, you can look up the meaning of that, but you want to first start with what does this mean to me? What do I think that this means? Because they're going to always present these symbols from your frame of reference. I think that that's really important to understand. We also want to pay attention, speaking of symbolism, to our dreams. This is another way that we connect with signs, synchronicities, and symbols specifically. So notice what's happening in your dreams. Sometimes we have direct intuitive dreams, and other times we have dreams that are showing us in the form of some kind of symbolism, a message, a connection, or something that we need to be aware of. So those are seven ways to help develop your intuition. I hope that that's helpful to you. Please let me know in comments below what stood out to you the most from this video, what you're going to try, and if this was helpful for you. Thank you guys so much. I also want to highlight my membership. This is another, we have, I have a full in intuition development class in there. In my membership, it's only $9.99 a month. We're focused on personal development, spiritual development, metaphysical development, and intuition development. So if you're interested in all of those things, there's all kinds of tools and tricks and classes and hypnosis sessions and meditations and energy sessions, all the things to help support your spiritual journey. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you soon.